Hello everybody, this is Davis here and I'm gonna explain today the new interfaces for a couple of modules incorporated by the UCF feeder team which are the DG Generic 5 and the F monitor elements. These four uh, coordination of DG resources. So what I'm going to do to demonstrate this is to follow the script provided by them in which they play with the REE 123 node sy test system and they create two generic 5 elements. So to create the generic 5 just bring the generic 5 form. That one is available on the PC elements sub palette of the constructor palette and there just start populating the controls. Sometimes the titles and the captions of the controls doesn't match exactly with the name of the variable provided. So if you have doubts, just put the cursor on top of the control and a tip string will show up telling you what's the name of the variable so you can just figure it out. And uh, right now what I'm doing is just entering the values provided on the script. Uh, we're adding everything here. And while you're doing that, a 3D model will be also be built on the right side of the panel. There are some parameters that were not considered into this form because they were not provided initially on the script. So in case you need to add those parameters here, uh, well, you can do it using the additional OpenDSL definitions. As I said before, this model was provided by Feeder from UCF. So they are the experts on how the model works. Uh, here I'm gonna also modify some Boolean controls. I'm bringing also the extra OpenDSS definitions that are not available on the controls designed for the form. It's not a problem. And then I'm gonna save the model. Here OpenDSS is requesting me to make click on the bus where I'm gonna connect the PC element, in this case Generic 5. So I'm just going to click on boss 76 and connect the faces as I need. So I'm going to show the boss elements, the boss names, and also with the PC e display options, I'm going to show the generic 5 in yellow color. The second generic element is very similar to the first one. Actually, I think it's the same. So I'm just going to bring it here. It's G2 and I'm going to start typing all the other values. So I'm just going to go ahead and enter everything. Again, if you have any doubts on what's the, what the control is, what, what variable the, point the control is pointing to, just put your mouse cursor on top of the control and it will tell you what's the name of the variable so you can match the, you can match the script with what you're typing in the front panel. Again, typing in uh, the values, everything according to the script, 0 0.01. done. I have to bring back the extra open DSS definition, making sure that the booleans are working correctly. And the second generic 5 will be connected on bus 83, which is which is on top of the feeder. And now we connect the DG5 element and click OK and we can see it's actually, actually it has been added to the model right now. Now the next step will be to set the voltage basis according to the script. I'm going to do that very quick using the OpenDSS console. So I'm just going to open the console, execute. That's it. Now let's bring back the script. <coughs> next step is going to be to set max iterations 500 
and then make a solution in snap mode. That's what we're going to do. So I'm going to enable the simulator palette. I already have an energy meter at the feeder head. I'm going to remove the, the names just to have a clearer visualization. And I'm going to set the max iteration 500. I'm going to do the same with the control max iterations, just in case. And we're going to solve. It solves correctly. I mean, no problem. So we're good so far. Now we're going to set up the regulators according to the instructions sent by feeder. Now I'm going to do the I'm going to use the control, the OpenSS console again to do that. Just execute. We're good. And now we're going to create the F monitor. So as you can see, for defining the F monitor, you need several lines. But I'm um, summarizing that in a single form. So to create the new F monitor, just go again, go, go back to the con constructor palette, and there you have the the F monitor. So First part is going to be to define the, the domain elements. So we're going to find the cluster, the cluster number. Then we're going to select the main element, the virtual leader. And you can select whatever element it is from this list, or just type the name. The good thing about this list is that you're going to be able to check and verify that the element that you're calling actually exists. Then you just to find the other parameters, and now we're going to add the list of nodes within the cluster. To do that, we have all these controls for adding, delete, view, and edit, edit the, the node. So now we're going to find the number of node, the node number, the terminal, the voltage base, the control gain, and we're going to find the bus name again using this smart list that will bring basically just the names of the buses that exist on the system and the monitored object. It just it could be whatever you want. It's a line, whatever. You just click on it and put it there. Automatically the communication vectors and communication delay vectors are gonna be populated with zeros with the same amount of nodes that you have. You can also use this table to edit the values of the of the node. Now let's add the other one, which is pointing to other node to node A3 and is monitoring the other line. And with that, I'm going to populate the communication vectors for delay and the communication vectors. And uh, as you can see, you don't have to enter the number of the node because it's already defined on the table on the left. So to just enter the values, that's it. And the name of the of the F monitor is FM1. Now it's defined. I'm going to use the highlighting tool to highlight where are my F monitors, which basically is going to highlight the buses that have been controlled or monitored with those green, green monitors. And we're good with the F monitor. So after defining the F monitor, we're going to solve again, just to snap snap solution. So I'm going to go back to the simulator palette. Solve. It's working good. I'm going to bring back the script and uh, they are adding a couple of monitors. I'm going to do that also using the OpenDSS console just to make it quick. So I'm going to open the console and I'm going to delete the previous statements and there you go. Monitor created. Now they're going to set the mode dynamic and setting the hour in 0 0.01. Okay, we're going to do that. So I'm going to open the configuration panel, set everything dynamic mode. And for the hour, okay, the simulation is 200. They're going to do a simulation for 200 iterations. So I'm going to go ahead and enter that magnitude in this step. And I'm going to set the hour using the console just to make it quick. Hour equals 0 0.01. But if I want to do it in a more sophisticated way, I can use the time controls that we have in OpenDSS. With that, I'm going to solve. So we can see that we run 200 iterations. 
and we have created also the interfaces for the new monitors. Now, looking at the script, we are modifying the set point for a couple of generic five elements. So, I'm changing the set point and the gain. So, I'm going to just change that using the OpenGCS control console. And now, they run a simulation for 1,000, 3, and 4,000 times. So, total 5,003. I'm going to go ahead and just change the number of iterations by 5,003. We're good. And run simulation. We're good. And after that, what is on the script is just exporting what we have on the monitors. And I'm going to do that using uh, the monitors I have. And because I have installed OpenDSS uh, Viewer, I'm going to have a more sophisticated uh, graphics than you can have with the traditional DSS view. So you can see the link for downloading OpenDSS Viewer. And now we're going to see the monitor. So this is the monitor for G1. This is for the energy meter, you don't need that. And here, I'm going to remove the P out, and voila, we have the rest. We have all the magnitudes. And now I'm going to generate, I'm going to export G2. And here we are. Again, I'm going to remove the last level, and here we are. So apparently, everything is working good. So 